Welcome back to the unofficial Squarespace Entrepreneur Podcast. My name is Omari Harabin, and if this is your first time listening, this show is all about building a business on Squarespace, especially businesses that serve the users of Squarespace. So if that sounds like you, then you're in the right place. This week, we got some big news that Squarespace is being acquired in a private, a $7 billion private equity deal. Um, and I wanted to talk about it uh, briefly from the perspective of a solopreneur within the Squarespace ecosystem and what this what this could you know mean for us. Um, but this is really just my my perspective. Um, I've as someone who's tethered their business to Squarespace um, for the past almost a decade now, um, I'm always I've always been interested in you know the the macro of what goes on with the company. And so two years ago, when Squarespace announced that they were going public in a direct listing, I was at the edge of my seat because I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, I'll be able to invest in the co- in the company. You know, I'll be able to own some shares. Uh, you know, I, I thought it would be like a really, uh, you know, cool experience. And, and it was because um, I haven't paid attention to the last few, but uh, you know, listening to the earnings calls and, and, you know, it was, you know, great from, from the perspective of, like I said, a, a solopreneur in the Squarespace ecosystem. Um, because I think uh, going from 2020 to 2021 and, and forward, uh, there's a lot more transparency, a lot more kind of, you know, here's what we're working on. Here's what's coming down the pipe. Um, a bit more like, of a roadmap that, you know, prior to, uh, prior to 2020, I think a lot of, um, Squarespace designers and professionals at the time were, were always kind of looking for. Um, and I think we've gotten that to a certain degree. And, uh, I think there's definitely been a real, uh, collaborative feel between what the circle community and, and leadership have done, um, in, in really cultivating and bringing in um, the the circle perspective, and and um, also you know again uh, being transparent as much as possible as it relates to uh, what's coming and, and what's being worked on. So now with Squarespace uh, going private again, I think there are going to be some some really good benefits to this as well. So while you know there won't be any more public disclosure, right, in in terms of the financials and and so on, um, I think we're going to see a lot of growth in areas that um, perhaps we haven't seen, um, you know, up until now. Uh, And and looking at the trajectory up until now, um, with commerce being a significant, like, uh, part of the product that has grown over the past four or five years, I don't anticipate that slowing down, right? I think if we go forward a decade and imagine uh, a world where, you know, kids who are in middle school right now or, or, you know, begin in high school um, will have some type of online venture, online business um, that, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, it just wasn't something that you imagined unless you were some kind of outlier. And so as an outlier of the past, right, I think the, the new future is one where what was once an outlier becomes like the, the norm. So I say that to say, like, if you look, if you think about what it takes to sell something online today, on the surface is very easy, right? It's very simple. Um, but as you get into the weeds of any idea or any kind of product or, you know, digital product or thing that you want to sell in the ways that you can possibly sell it and the, the diff- all of the different nuances, there there's a lot to, you know, there's a lot that's needed in which that's why there's so many different uh, companies out there uh, in this space. Um, I was listening to an interview yesterday uh, with the CEO of um, one of Squarespace's competitors, larger competitors, and he was talking about 
their, you know, what, what led to their growth over the past decade. That's the theme today, decades. And, um, you know, he mentioned their app ecosystem being, um, really significant because it allowed them to prioritize like the core functionality and feature set of their product. And while their ecosystem filled all of those gaps and all of those long tail use cases that their customers needed so that their customer could, you know, get everything that they needed without them having to fulfill it uh, themselves. And I've always imagined that as being a an opportunity um, within the Squarespace ecosystem. And, I, and to a certain degree, um, I think just out of organic nature, um, that's happened. That's largely why this podcast exists, um, is to capture all of those different stories. Um, but at the same time, I think if Squarespace adapts a, a bit more of an open model on the tech side, uh, I think we can see a lot of growth, right? So what I'm saying is like, for example, with the APIs or with the uh, uh, extension and plugin ecosystems, if those marketplaces um, get the the kind of support and attention, the temp, how can I ignore templates? <laughs> um, you know, get the kind of uh, attention and, and, and resources. I think these ecosystems that have been brewing uh, for the past decade um, can really blossom and lead to a lot of growth for for Squarespace. Um, so those are my thoughts, right? So while while Squarespace becomes private again, right? Um, I think there's a certain potential that exists. This is just, these are just my thoughts here. There's a certain potential exists that exists with becoming more open on the, on the technical side. So, uh, developer platform, you know, that was such a, a cool thing that I think was very underutilized, but I think the reason it was underutilized was, um, uh, because, there's a, a slight disconnect between the perception of Squarespace as a tool and, and the people who use it. And anyway, now I'm going off on the little tangent, but um, those are my thoughts on this, this whole, uh, this deal. I know, you know, I, I haven't done too much research or looking into it too much, but as again, as someone who has tethered their business to Squarespace, when I look at the numbers over the past, from 2019 to, to even this last quarter, my business pretty much mirrors Squarespace's growth, right? So, you know, um, from 2019 to 2020, from, from 2023 first quarter to, to 2024 first quarter, um, rel, you know, and on a relative scale, um, a thousand times less, but you know, my business mirrors that. And so I, I imagine for a lot of us in this ecosystem, um, when you overlay your traffic or when you overlay your revenue numbers on on Squarespace's growth over the past five years, you're going to see similar trends. You know, um, you're going to see that downward slope from 2021 to 2022. You're going to see that little uptick going from 2023 to 2024. And I know it's not just me, <laughs> you know, so that's why I think, you know, these macro conversations are important because I've learned, right, that like, yeah, I've got some levers. Yeah, there's there's things that I can do. And yeah, um, on a on a small scale, we do have a a total addressable market, which is Squarespace's customers. Right. So if our businesses are deemed to grow, obviously step number one, we've got to saturate uh, Squarespace's addressable market. Um, but thinking from a, uh, a a more, you know, a higher mindset, it's like, well, what if we all, you know, collective, which we already do, but w- what if, you know, there was like a, a collective growth mindset operation <laughs> um, where, you know, we're not constrained to Squarespace's customer base, but we're actually 
um, bringing people into a world where Squarespace just happens to also be a part of that, you know, a tool for that. And really, I think if I zoom out and look at my own story within this market, um, Squarespace from day one has just been a tool for storytelling. That was my first goal. Um, and then uh, now, you know, a, a tool for uh, for business and, and community and relationship. So that's my, uh, that's my thoughts. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it and uh, look out for our next episode coming really soon because we're now in a new season and uh, we've got a number of uh, shows lined up for you in the next week. So stay tuned for that and uh, I'll see you on the next show. Peace.